Hey guys, Chris Mingay from Revo Group. Uh, I've got a new bit of kit that we got out of Interspec from the US that I was just going to show you guys. It's uh, the same old Powerbox H that we've been using for a while, but the software and the attachments with it are for rail wheel stress tests. So we don't do it so much in Australia, but in the in the um, in Europe they do it a lot. They test wheels both brand new to make sure before they go in service and in-service wheels for internal stresses, compressive and tensile stresses in the just just underneath the tread here in the rim of the wheel. So what this does is uses an EMAT probe such as this with two transverse coils shooting in a uh, horizontal and uh, horizontal and a vertical plane at once. And it's shooting sound from this part of the rim here, 10, mil 10 millimeters below the tread, to the outside of the rim and back again. And it's playing, all, it, it measures the time of flight from the vertical and the horizontal plane, and then plugs that time of flight measurement in microseconds into a pretty fancy algorithm and comes up with the internal stress, stress in megapascals, uh, compressive or tensile. So we calibrate the probe on a block such as this and do two or three readings and make sure the readings are stable first. Once we know the probe's operating great and all the software's behaving, that probe there is the same as what's in this fixture here. So we have a fixture with magnets here and we measure the depth from the top of the flange, add 10 millimetres, and in this case it was 40 millimetres down. And then I wind this, this little wheel here until I get to 40 millimetres on the, the centre of the probe, measured by this little cutout here. So once the probe's at the right depth, I'll set my little counter here to zero, and I'll hang this. I've, I've prepped the wheel just very basically with a bit of sandpaper to get the rust scale off it and the dirt, and that snaps on there with magnets, and I'm ready to go pretty much. Plug this in. So the software, I've already loaded it. Now once it's ready to rock and roll, I measure my sound wave in the horizontal first. And I can bump the gain up a little there. Then we can go and measure the sound wave in the vertical. And both of them break the gate. We've got a good sound back wall echo. So then now I can go ahead and play one against the other, one off against the other. And it's what they call bifringence. So there's the horizontal coil. And that'll overlay now with the orange vertical and does the algorithms and we've got 259 megapascals of stress, which is a tensile stress within, within the wheel rim. So once I've taken that measurement, I'll wind this down one millimetre. So as you can see, uh, I'll, I'll wind that down one millimetre. It's not, not spot on there because I can't see with the phone in it. But I'll go down in one millimetre increments and I'll take four or five measurements. Now, if it's a very worn rim, I may only get two measurements before it starts to play up. But in this case, I did five and it was no problem. So once I've done that, I'll check my sound paths again. The horizontal is strong. The vertical is pretty strong. So I'll conduct the test. There's the horizontal. There's the overlaid vertical. And we've got 314 megapascals of stress in, in tension, one millimeter down. So once I've taken five of those measurements, I move this around to the second radian at 120 degrees. And I'll do another five, and I'll come over here to the third radian at 240 and do another five. So I'll have 15 measurements then, and it plugs into to a report within the software here, and when I've finished, I just press end report and download to a USB stick and plug it into my laptop, print it off, send it to the customer as a PDF file. Uh, we've got some um, some limits from Europe on used wheels. 
Most of them were uh, around negative 250 to positive 300 megapascals of stress within each wheel, depending on what material type they were. This one here passed. Once we've downloaded the report onto a USB stick, we can print it out, give it to the customer as a, as a PDF file. You can see here, I've got 15 measurements. Uh, then they've graphed each radian. So there's the first radian with five different measurements, second radian, third radian, and it also takes a snapshot of every one of the 15 tests that you can recall if you wish to. With this data, we can come along to standards. Each rail company can develop their own standards, or in this case, this is a German standard that I borrowed. Uh, and once you've got the category of wheel and the steel quality, you can see what the admissible values are for the stress and pass or fail the wheels. So this wheel passed. This is a wheel set that I borrowed from a mate at Martinez Rail. Uh, it did had a fairly um, easy life, uh, but in Australia, the, the 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 trains that we really would be worrying about is the big heavy iron ore hauling trains in the Pilbara that are getting up towards the maximum axle weights uh, haul, hauling serious gear. So there you have it. If this is of interest to you, please give us a call or check us out. Check us out on our website. Thanks very much.